You have just moved to Austin to go to the University of Texas. There is an exciting year of hard work and fun ahead of you. Austin is a new and exciting place that offers a ton of experiences for students. Living away from home is an exciting and nerve-wracking one of these. Most freshmen live in on or off campus dormitories. Apartment living seems to be a whole year away, or at least that's what you would think. West Campus is the ideal living location for most due to its proximity to campus, restaurants, shops, and sorority and fraternity life. But with the West Campus living situation, freshmen can be left fighting for places to live as early as September or October. This is often an overwhelming experience for freshmen who mostly have never been on their own or ha had to handle a task like this before. So where is a prospective resident to start? First, make a checklist of the criteria that you want. Determine what you would then consider to be a non-negotiable as opposed to what you would consider to be an extra perk. Keep this list in mind throughout the entire process. Once you have decided what your must-haves are, it is time to check out the options that UT's West Campus has to offer. 2400 Nuasis is UT's West Campus newest apartment complex. It is located in West Campus at 24th Street in Nuasis. The different layouts that this apartment complex offers is the one bedroom, one bath, the two bedroom, two bath, the three bedroom, three bath, and the four bedroom, four bath. Amenities included with a lease at 2400 Nuasis include a pool, computer centers, on-site garage parking, a fitness center, study rooms, cable, Wi-Fi, and in-unit laundry machines. A lot of people would argue that 2400 is the most desired complex because it is located in the heart of West Campus. The next apartment complex is Quarters. Quarters differs from 2400 because it has five different locations all throughout West Campus. Layouts offered at these complexes include one bedroom, one bathroom, two bedroom, two bathroom, and three bedroom, three bathroom. The square footage of these rooms are much larger than others, however, these rooms are always meant to be shared. Amenities at quarters include a pool, computer centers, on-site garage parking, and fitness centers. However, a downside to quarters is that not every house has these amenities. Some would require residents to commute to other quarters properties in order to use these amenities. The block is very similar to the quarters apartments as it has multiple locations throughout West Campus. These locations include the block on 23rd, the block on 28th, the block on Leon, the block on 25th, the block on Rio Grande, and the block on Pearl. Layouts offered at this complex include one bedroom, one bath, two bedroom, two bath, three bedroom, two bath, three bedroom, three bath, four bedroom, two bath, four bedroom, four bath, and five or more bedrooms and five or more baths. Amenities included at this apartment complex include a pool, game rooms, on-site garage parking, a fitness center, cable, Wi-Fi, in-unit laundry machines, all appliances, and residents may also have pets in some rooms. A downside to the block is similar to quarters. Not all amenities, such as the pool and fitness center, are not available at every location. Now that you have seen all your options, it's now time to make your choice. You may have found a place that matched the amenities exactly where you wanted them to be. However, the price may have come in a little too high, while the bedroom and bathroom count came in a little too low. Because of the annoying experiences my partner and I had with West Campus Living, we decided to make a survey counting others' experiences with and preferences regarding West Campus. Using SurveyMonkey, we collected responses from 100 people. This was inclusive of all classifications of students at the University of Texas, both males and females, and Greek-affiliated students and non-Greek-affiliated students. The pictured graph provides a visual representation of the demographic. As a part of this survey, we asked participants which location of West Campus they would prefer to live in, regardless of the buildings that were in that area. The majority of students answered that they would prefer to live within 24th Street and 26th Street. The categories that followed were 20th to 23rd Street, then 27th to 29th Street, 
Very few respondents answered that they would like to live in another area of West Campus. If you focus on just what non-Greek affiliated students answer to this question, you will see very little change from the previous graph. Their responses were very reflective of the overall majority. When you then look at just the Greek affiliated students, you will notice that the other category is not present in this pie chart. Greek affiliated students never selected that answer choice. Only two sorority and fraternity houses are located outside of 20th to 29th Street, which probably led to this response. Survey participants were then asked, regardless of price limitations or poor location, which building itself was most desirable to live in. There was a fairly balanced distribution between most of the apartment complexes. However, 2400 New Oasis did have the overall majority. If you then just focused on the responses from Greek affiliated students, you will see a very slight change in the graph. 26 West and 2400 New Oasis both gained a few more responses in this narrowed down demographic than they did in the total overall averages. When you then focus on the non-Greek affiliated students, you will see that 2400 New Oasis still has a majority. However, the quarters apartment complex gains a lot more popularity than it did with Greek students and a lot more percentage than it did in the overall averages. The next question asked participants to rank different factors that weighed in on their decision making process. Between males and females and Greek and non-Greek students, the totals were always the same. Location was always the first factor and most important factor that people weighed in on. Then it was followed by price, bedroom, bathroom number, amenities, and then having the furnished or unfurnished option. The next question asked respondents about what realistic ideal price they would pay monthly and what the maximum price is that they would pay monthly. Overall, respondents answered in very similar areas and the average maximum price people were willing to pay was $939.87. The average ideal price that people wanted to pay was $658.53. When you look at the average ideal budget and break it down by the demographic, there's very little fluctuation between the different categories. Males did, on average, respond a higher price than females did. However, this only differs by $4, so it's not a very drastic difference. In comparison, you can see that the maximum monthly budget has much more fluctuation than the ideal one. When you look at the different categories according to their maximum budgets, you will see that females and Greeks are more willing to pay a higher price for their lease. The range from the highest price to the lowest price was $24 in this scenario. Regardless of how much one was willing to pay, participants were asked to select which floor plan they would choose if they were applying for a lease. The overall majority picked four bedroom, four bath, followed then by two bedroom, two bath. But if you look strictly at bedroom numbers, the four bedroom option was selected the most. When you then break it down by demographic, first by the non-Greek affiliated students, you will see very little fluctuation than the previous overall majority. However, when you look at Greek affiliated students, there is an overwhelming majority that prefers four bedroom and four bathroom. This trend continues when you look at the female response. The overwhelming majority still rests with four bedroom, four bath. This suggests that Greeks and females may like to live in larger community. Contrasting this idea is the male demographic. It is obvious that the three bedroom and two bath option has not been selected at all by the male presence. Also, the five 
or more bedroom and five and more bath option was only selected one time. Overall, there was a very even distribution of picks between one bedroom all the way to four bedroom. This suggests that the men do not have a stronger preference on their layouts as much as females do. One factor that may have gone into a decision making between different layouts is the cost. It is evident that the one bedroom, one bath, the three bedroom, three bath, the four bedroom, two bath, and the five or more bedroom and five or more bath are the most expensive options. This may be the reason why these options were some of the fewer suggested in the previous polling. It's also evident that only half of the actual costs are anywhere near the budgets of the participants. Only four of the options were at or near the maximum price that the participants were willing to pay. At the end of the survey, participants were asked to record what their biggest complaint about ex their experience with the West Campus living process was. The majority picked that needing to sign the lease so early on in first semester was the biggest pain, which was then followed by poor customer service, dealing with legal documents without parents or guidance, having only a few options, and then managing roommates. After collecting all of this data, we asked ourselves, is there a perfect department? Using the results that we collected, no. There is not a compartment that collectively reflects all of the desires of the average of the student population. However, if a new apartment complex was to come into West Campus, this is the checklist that they should use in order to create a competitive advantage over their competition. They need to offer more bed, four bedroom and four bathroom options, and it's the cost per person between $660 and $940. It needs to be located between 24th and 26th Street. It needs to have all of the amenities and offer flexibility in the signing date.